Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. A new week is upon us and a new adventure. Therefore, here we come. Gary, what are we going to be talking about today and throughout the week? We're going to talk about preaching the truth about hunters and wildlife. There's so much misinformation out there, anti-type stuff. You know, you just have to work through it. And there's a lot of things that hunters do that actually helps to support wildlife. And my interest in the outdoors began... Very early, before I fished and hunted, I went to the Watertown, South Dakota Library and spent a lot of time looking for books that contained outdoor adventures. The ones I read and reread were by Jack London, Call of the Wild, The White Fang, Sea Wolf. And then as I got older, I looked for big game hunters and adventures, several books by Hemingway, like Old Man of the Sea and others. Absolutely, Gary. I think one way or another, obviously getting in the outdoors is always what we want to do, but it all starts somewhere. And, and uh, you know, those stories, they do, they capture that essence, that desire, that drive of what the outdoors is. They get you in. excited, that's yeah, for sure. Absolutely. As you continue to grow, your adventures continued, and therefore your outdoor passion only grew. Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, of course, I think you were a part of that. Some different things with family and friends as well. I had several friends that liked the outdoors, and we used my father's World War II knapsack and a flashlight, put together lunch and our BB guns, and we hiked out to the radio tower hill along 81. And that's now where Mount Marty University is. And, yeah, there was a few trees out there. There were squirrels and, and some of the underground passages we explored. Sounds like a great childhood, Gary, and a great start to your outdoor adventures. Hopefully you have a similar story. We look forward to talking more about hunters, outdoorsmen, and outdoor women alike and what they do to better conservation and the outdoors as the week rolls on. Thanks also to our sponsors who make this program possible. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking truths as it relates to outdoorsmen and outdoor women and their passion for conservation. Being an angler and a hunter has always been important to me. And when I was younger, I never once thought that catching fish or hunting pheasants wasn't right and the way things were done in the real world. But nowadays, we're being bombarded by false statements in print as well as radio and TV by individuals and groups that aren't only anti-hunting, many are anti-meat and determined to bring us down. And Gary, it's not as if folks aren't entitled to their thoughts and opinions, and that's certainly okay. That's Mm -hmm. part of this great country. However, the goal today or throughout this week is just to talk about some of the things that maybe aren't quite accurate and to to make sure we have a conversation, not the lie. And blames. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, unfortunately, uh, sometimes the tactics aren't good to, to try to get your point across. And that happens oftentimes with the anti-hunting, anti-fishing, anti-outdoor organizations. Yeah, much of that uh, misinformation, as well as other things, are blown out of proportion. Well, some were just outright lies. You know, there's liberal organizations out there trying to shut down those who support a gun right and doing their best to end hunting. One of the hunters' most important supportive organizations, the National National Rifle Association was located in New York and was sued in New York as well as others and they're forced to de- declare Chapter 11 bankruptcy. America becomes more urbanized. Our population becomes more detached from the real and truthful facts. And as a youngster going up in Watertown, I knew that hamburger, pork chops, and bacon came from, from back then. In the good old days, there were no organizations or groups that would ever thought about the garbage that's being put out now about hunting and our gun rights. Certainly important to filter through opinions and truth. Thanks, Gary, for the great information. Thank you for joining us and to our fine sponsors of Outdoor Adventures Radio. Until next time, may your adventures be great. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week, we're talking truths as it relates to outdoorsmen and outdoor women and their passion for conservation. The outdoor organizations are some of the best advocates and caretakers of the land and the outdoors because we love it so much. We're doing the right things to help preserve it and benefit it in most cases. Yeah, you bet. You know, I grew up in town, but I was right on the edge of town. My grandfather had a hog and cattle buying station, so I knew where you know where hamburger and pork came from. Other people think it's from affiliated food store or high B. Right. And some believe that they come from like McDonald's, Hardee's, or what the heck. Come on, let's get real. You know, these are the same people that here we're going hunting thinking that we're doing something immoral. Well, come on. 
uh, where I went to school, history was my favorite subject, and when we read about how America was settled and those that had to live off the land, they needed to hunt in order to feed their family. It was something that just needed to be done. That's all there is to it. It was part of survival once upon a time, and people could argue that maybe that's not the same, and there's probably some truth to that, but in today it still is a, a means to put food on the table. It absolutely is, and in the process, we've learned how to better conserve it and how to protect And again, the dollars and cents that are created in the outdoorsman's world is helping actually, in many cases, better the outdoors versus raping or robbing the outdoors, so to speak, is what you might get from the other sources. We're not saying there's not two sides to every coin or conversation. Simply, please find out the facts and the truths, not just what opinions might be out there leading the information down the wrong path. Thank you, Gary, for the information. Thank you for joining us today and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Until next time, may your adventures be great. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking truths as it relates to outdoorsmen and outdoor women and their passion for conservation. Another thing, there's some individuals in our country that are trying to not only add a gun, but they're trying to change history and are given rights. And I, I wonder if the new history books nowadays even mention much about the original country's history. Right. And for those of us who enjoy the outdoors, if we don't get our rears and gear and help protect our rights, not only will we lose our opportunity to hunt, we'll also lose our Second Amendment rights to bear arms. It's scary. It really is, Simon. Yeah, one of those organizations leading the charge, Gary, is PETA. That's uh, People for Ethical Treatment of Animals. Uh, maybe some of these people have seen too many Winnie Boo movies where animals are best friends, round, running around, having a good old time right. playing together. I'm sure you know that I, what I'm talking about, an animated movie where the tiger and the piglet are best friends. Right. Now, that's a, a child's fairy tale. In the real world, they are best friends. Yeah, and again, there's more and more examples, Gary, that we can talk about. Uh, and again, it's just a lot of times framed up wrong it starts from a core of truth and then it's framed up wrong like there was a gentleman i know that went up north and kind of had a a deal with the bears he uh, he talked to him he filmed with him they're in his in the yard of where he was living and he he felt he got up close and personal with him bears are meat eaters let's let's face it one of the largest and nastiest predators in north america and I'm sure there's times when you can get close to bears and they might not bother you like when they're in a zoo in a cage. But there are times, for example, and this guy thought that he figured those bears out uh, in the real wild world out there and was so competent, he brought his girlfriend up there. And uh, he ended up, friends of bear ended up killing and eating both of them. Thank you, Gary, for the story. Thank you for joining us today and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Have a great day. Welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon. And Fuller. This week's topic, hunters, outdoorsmen, and outdoor women, and their passion for conservation and preservation. Literally, Gary, these folks put their money where their mouth is. The licensees, and they were ones that hunters actually worked to put on themselves. That money to choose goes to state agencies to fund programs, including hunter safety. And these dollars not only benefit hunters, but they also benefit who enjoys the outdoors. And uh, people can watch birds and they can hike. We're the ones that push the special taxes on our hunting gear, and the tax money would be distributed back to the state. Game and Parks, Department of Natural Resources, Game Fishing Parks to fund these projects. Yeah, there were species such as the Canadian goose, white-tailed deer, wild turkey on the brink of extinction, and many maybe didn't know that, but commercialized production of animals. Regulations were put in place because of conservationist hunters, outdoorsmen that wanted to preserve for future and get things right. And that is what an outdoorsman, an outdoor woman wants is a good, healthy population of everything. And so we're constantly working on the checks and balances and putting our money where our mouth is, so to speak, Gary. Yeah, you bet. You know, we've got several sportsmen's conservation groups like the National Wild Turkey Federation, Whitetails Unlimited, Pheasants Forever, Ducks Unlimited. At their banquets, uh, hunters go and they purchase things, and that money goes back into protecting and taking care of wildlife. And if you attend one of these banquets, why not take a kid along or several kids, introduce them to the group where they can have a good time with other kids and uh, win some prizes and enjoy a great meal. They're good groups to belong to. And it's hunters' groups that do it. It's not non-hunters. It's the hunters that are 
putting the money back into wildlife. Some great information, Gary. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for joining us and to our fine sponsors who make Outdoor Adventures Radio possible. Until next time, may your adventures be great. Good day and welcome to another edition of Outdoor Adventures Radio with host Gary Howie. I'm Simon Fuller. This week we're talking about the truths as it relates to outdoorsmen and outdoors women and their passion for the outdoors versus maybe some of the other stories that are painted in the media, not so negative or kind. Gary, Mother Nature, in most cases, can be much crueler than humans. Things like blue tongue, a terrible disease that has affected the deer population, fowl, chlorea for some of the waterfowl, mange for some of the fur-bearing animals, and Gary, when those things hit, they're much nastier, and when those things hit and take a dent in the population, outdoorsmen and conservationists alike adapt and, and have less tags or less available to hunt, too. So, We're always watching and making sure the checks and balances are in place, trying to do things right. And I think that's really the, the, you know, nobody's perfect, but that's really the summation of this week's show. Outdoorsmen and outdoor women are, are aware and trying to do the best for the outdoors, Gary. You bet. And we need to be more vocal, get kids involved, preach the gospel, the truth about all that hunters do for wildlife. So it's our own fault in a way, but uh, we're working on it. Absolutely, Gary. And that's a good way to wrap it up. We are working and always looking to improve. So probably the most concerned with the outdoors is the outdoor women and outdoor men. Gary, a great outdoor adventure. So many more just like this can be found online and on the television. When and where can I find you, sir? Well, Outdoorsman Adventure Television airs in eight uh, upper Midwestern states. Uh, you can check your local channels for the time and listing. South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, we're on Midco Sports Network, and Nebraska News Channel, Nebraska, and other local markets. Well, in Iowa, we're on local markets. As always, Gary, a fantastic outdoor adventure, and we look forward to catching up with you again next week, my friend. Hey, it's always my pleasure, Simon. We also thank you for joining us today and throughout the week, and thanks to our fine sponsors who make this program possible. Until next time, may your adventures be great.